everybody, this is Matt from Simplistic Reviews, the Simplistic Reviews podcast, and um, I'm very lucky to be joined today. Uh, we're covering Fantasia Fest uh, 25 or 2021, however you want to uh, consider it, and I'm sitting with my first interview of the festival, and I'm very excited to have this gentleman on the podcast and show. Uh, Rob, last name, please. <laughs> my name's Rob Jabaz, and here I am on... <laughs> The uh, what's it called? The Simple Podcast. The Simplistic Reviews Podcast. So, <laughs> Simplistic podcast. Yeah. See, we we have a little thing going on where I couldn't pronounce Rob's last name, so Rob can't really say what our podcast is. So we have something going on right here. So. Already, already <laughs> passive aggressive, passive aggressive tension. Not at all. I mean, our podcast is all based on passive aggressive tension, so you would fit right in on the show. So, it's, he's offering me a job already. I mean, uh, shameless plug. I'm shameless in who I want to have on the show. Um, so, Rob, thank you for uh, coming and spending some time. I know you're a very busy man. You are premiering your uh, feature film, The Sadness, all over the world right now. And it, you're kind of a homecoming for you. You are doing your North America premiere uh, during Fantasia 2021 for, for, the, for The Sadness. And whew, this movie is, uh, it's a lot. It's a, it's a, very id driven it is intense it is crazy it is transgressive it's everything i love in a uh a i don't want to call this it's obviously not a zombie uh film it's more of a in the vein of like a 28 days later you know type of thing like that um, that's a zombie movie okay I, I mean if you're fine with a zombie movie i mean like, like, like what i'm saying is 28 days later is a zombie movie yeah i mean uh I guess this is like always the debate that everybody has where it's like, what are zombies really? I guess zombies are just people who aren't in control of their own kind of, you know, body and everything. Like, I'll I'll tell you what I think. I thought, I mean, you know, I made one of these, so I stopped thinking quite a lot about it. Yeah. Um, So the way I see it is like, you know, the, the, in the most sense, it needs to be like the living dead Mm -hmm. for a zombie movie. Right. But then it's like, you know, okay. 28 days later, uh you know like th- th- this this kind of rage virus thing i mean what's what really is the difference here? the difference is just like um you know we need like they're they're not we need them to be running around and we and we need it to be believable and you can't mm-hmm. have dead corpse running like running around so we'll just make it a rage zom- a rage virus but then it's like um what what does a zo- what does zombie film mean then and it's like oh well it means that they're essentially mindless right yeah they don't like you you can't really attribute the the bad things that they do to them uh and that's what makes the the, and then you can also sort of attribute this to like nightmare city uh Mm. uh, or or um uh well you know just like any other sort of like movie where it's like infected people like there are some italian movies that are like that yeah um but but at the end of the day uh in the sadness uh the people who are who are doing stuff they 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 know what they're doing and mm-hmm. and they like what they're doing so so you actually can attribute like blame to them and, and i think that that's sort of what is really the the difference and uh, another thing that i will say is that um i think that uh uh we've just been kind of calling calling the uh the sadness a zombie movie just like sort of in a uh it's a colloquial kind of sense where it's like just marketing it's just it's, it's marketing just, yeah. i mean you can never underestimate how lazy uh journalists are and how lazy uh buyers are like they just want to be like oh yeah it's a zombie movie it's a shark movie it's a like you know they just want to be able to say what it is like if you start explaining what it is to people yeah and their eyes just start glazing over and they're just like whatever like there's so much shit out there that it's just like mm-hmm whatever you just need to sort of get in there and tell them what it is quick let them in and then hopefully they go down and they, they sit down and they watch the movie and and then they're surprised by it you know and then there's they're like wow i've never seen a zombie movie like this before you know it's not a zombie movie <laughs> it's a it's a zombie movie in, in, in the grand sense but that's it, like the most kind of like basic kind of comparison you can make it to um now seeing this film of course when we're wrapped up in this you know continual global pandemic that's just continuing to change how everybody's doing business and doing everything all together that's what kind of drew me to this film because um now i guess we can start back at the beginning uh what was kind of the genesis of the sadness and how long did it take to kind of create your vision and then i guess ultimately what was it like shooting 
I mean, I assume you, you shot this during the, what was the timetable of you shooting this film uh, on location in Taiwan as well, too? Because this is kind of a, uh, I don't want to call it like an alternate kind of Taiwan, but it is in, 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 a, in a way, yeah. An alternate Taiwan, like politically. Yeah. But anyways, um, the uh, the time frame, I mean, we, I wrote the film uh, in, I want to say May, and then we, June, July, we did all the pre-production casting and kind of setting everything up. Shot it in August, uh, special, like sort of, uh, oh, I edited it in, during September, maybe into October. And then uh, special effects and post and coloring. And then uh, sort of finalized the sound. And then we had it in theaters in January. So January this year, so January 2021. So it was yeah. just, it was kind of a wham, bam, thank you, man, production. I mean, you, you yeah. shot it over and you did a lot of work on it, but uh, what was what was it like shooting it on, on location in Taiwan kind of during, I guess, the heat of everything that was going on across? I mean, I know I'm in North America, so I can speak differently about what was going on kind of in Asia versus America. I mean, everything in Asia was so early in the pandemic and kind of, I guess raced across the country. Um, were there a certain lot of precautions? Did, did it kind of feel weird to shoot, be shooting kind of like a a film about a virus during a virus type thing, or was it like the perfect time? Like we need to make a movie at this time, and it was like just everything perfectly coming together about it. So uh, let me let me like sort of uh, enlighten you a little bit. Yeah, the, the, sure. The is, is um, Taiwan. Uh, was, was really hit hard with SARS mm -hmm. back, back uh, when was that? Maybe 2004 or something. I can't actually recall. I, like I maybe don't quote me on that, but it but it was definitely in the sort of the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. And uh, and because of that, um, they 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 realized early on that uh, like they basically just had like the the contingency plan, right? Yeah. Um, there were also sort of certain uh, political uh, the, an election had just happened, uh, and because of that, certain um, certain concerns had moved out of Taiwan, which which uh, and, and also sort of tourism to, to certain countries were were cut off. Were sort of uh, how do you say that? Like uh, it, it, in, uh, it was it stopped being encouraged. I guess you could say. Yeah, and, no, don't, uh, don't come over here, type thing. We're gonna we're trying to incubate this. We're trying to. Get this, get this virus done with. Oh, no, 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 you don't understand. Like, oh. this, this, this is all in relation to this election. Like, like some, oh, okay, okay. So, so already there was sort of this uh, uh, wall that kind of went up and it was just yeah. really fortuitous because then all of a sudden the, uh, the uh, uh, pandemic hits and, and Taiwan kind of just sprung right into action and uh, it ne the virus never really got a foothold uh, on Taiwan. So, mm -hmm. so there was this period of like over a year, like maybe about 14 months where they're just, they're, you know, everyone was really vigilant and we all mm -hmm. had to bring the masks and everything else, but there were like no cases in Taiwan, but everyone was like, it, it's not that weird to be wearing like a, like a, a face mask in Asia. Like when I yeah, first kind of see that all the time anyway, it's like, yeah. at least in videos or what I see on my news and everything like that. Sure. sure. So, so, you know, we basically we were living in this country where uh, you know, like we were still drinking on patios and, and eating in restaurants and, and, you know, like, like we, there were, you know, it, there was a pandemic going on elsewhere, mm -hmm. but in Taiwan, it was like kind of fine, you know, that the airports were, uh, um, you know, like, like super hardcore into like screening people and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they, they used like sort of these big data resources to make sure that, um, you know, people were being tracked if, if they were like new arrivals and stuff like that yeah. so anyways the pandemic hits and then my financer jeffrey huang was just like dude hollywood's closed uh let's make a movie and we won't have any competition and i said okay if, if you want to do that man i'm like who am i to who am i to to stop you like, you're great. my financier I'm, I'm you're gonna give me money to make this film i'm gonna do it <laughs> uh, i mean he gave me he gave he kind of i was i'm kind of working like on a i was working kind of as like a staff writer almost mm -hmm. at the time and then, um, and I, so I just, the, the task for me was just to write the film. And then, um, you know, he, he, like, I, you know, he's like, do you want to direct it? And I was just like, well, you know, I don't, you know, I, it was kind of nervous to do that because like, uh, you hear these stories about people kind of like 
in the 11th hour, you know, getting their, their film taken away and like re-edited and like, yeah. and, and I was just like, I don't know if I could, like, I, I'm, I'm fragile. I don't know if I could deal with that. <laughs> I had to, uh, I, uh, I basically, I just kind of said, okay, well, here, here it is. You, you go see if you can find yourself a director. And he, he went around and he couldn't find anyone to do it for like kind of the price he wanted. So I, he said, Rob, you know, do you want to, do you want to try doing this? And I said, okay, I, I will, but I need you to guarantee me a few things. And it was just basically what I said, like, I, I need to have final cut. I need, I, I can't, I can't have people in my ear telling me to do, to do something a certain way for what, like, I need, I need to be able to, to, to be in love with this movie and to make it my life and to, uh, and to, uh, you know, I need to be allowed to uh, make, to make this the most important thing uh, in my life uh, between this, this time and this time, you know, like, yeah. and, um, and then he said, that's what I want you to do. And I said, all right, well, you know, you might regret saying that, but uh, you know, let's, let's do it. So <clears throat> then we just, you know, we st just started doing the movie and, um, and then we, and, and just like what you said, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. The, the, the uh, sort of the urgency of, of the production, I think, um, I, like, I like that. I like, I like kind of being under the gun like that. Mm -hmm. I, like, I like pressure. I like, um, to bring the best out of you, you know, when you're under the gun. Yeah, absolutely. And also it's it, sort of with something like the sadness as well, like, um, like just urgency. I, I, this is sort of a stupid thing to say, but I feel like the urgency of like the production kind of like translates to like the, like the flavor of the movie. Like there's just sort of this real, like, yeah. Like, Get it, get it done get it done get it done yeah you know, fast, fast. so um it's almost like you're infected with the yeah, virus in, in a way <laughs> something like that um, yeah that's that's basically how it went down i mean it's uh i mean me growing up and just getting into you know movies in kind of just movies from korea movies from japan movies from china things like that so how old are you i'm i'm 37 Okay, so you're like, I'm, I'm right around your age. I feel like we're thir like what are you about 38, 39, something, something yeah. in that range. So we kind of probably came up in a certain era, and and I think Canadians, I think, are probably more enlightened with more film because you know, here in America, you're just shoved down your throat what you're supposed to watch and what's what you're supposed to watch. But after okay. you know graduating high school, it was like there's got to be something else out here. So. Me personally, I started Takashi Miike was like my first influence when it came to just extreme Asian cinema. Everything from Visitor Q to Ichi the Killer to Gozu, every uh, audition, everything. Audition, I think, was like my intro, and that was like the first film that I I had, I owned uh, yeah. from him. And it was like I showed up all my buddies, and they were like, I was like, you gotta watch this. And I'm like, some you know, some corny white white guy who's like, you gotta watch some, you gotta watch some fucked up Japanese movies. And they would, I would, and I had already seen it several times that I'm watching their reaction. I'm like, and they're like, oh, oh, oh my goodness, this is something else. And then of course with a lot of the Korean cinema, you know, going to Old Boy and then going to I Saw the Devil. I mean, of course these are bigger. Korean films that a lot of people do know, but they're they're just I don't want to call them splatter, but I mean they're they're hardcore, they're 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 extreme, and a lot of audiences here on this side of the of the world are like, oh no, I'm good with my Marvel movies or this or that or everything else in between. So um, that to me was my introduction. What was kind of like? I mean, obviously, you know, you grew up, you know, probably with a lot of the same movies I did, but what was you know, things like Ebola strain or, or things that you went to your first like Fantasia when, and were watching these transgressive films that wouldn't be screened anywhere in North America for the most part outside of like a curated film festival. Yeah. You know what's funny is I'm actually wearing, like I'm doing my laundry right now. So I'm wearing <laughs> this, this shirt, like suspect, suspect video and culture. Okay. This is, this is my, this is sort of like the cool video store in Toronto. Mm -hmm. Right, where, where I, um, I mean, I grew up in Mississauga, which is outside of Toronto, and um, that's more like a ski ski town and everything like that, right? Mississauga. I mean, I have a good friend of mine who was born in Toronto, so he would always tell me about going to Mississauga for like, yeah, we're going skiing in Mississauga and things like that. So. <laughs> There's no mountains around here. There's man. no mountains. Okay, is well, it more okay? Maybe not. Okay, is it more lake lake town stuff like yeah, that? Lakes. It's, okay, it's like on Lake Ontario. Okay, There's, there you go. No one's skiing around here, man. The only, okay. the only, the, the only. Uh, 
I mean, the, <laughs> no I'm going to cut that out. So yeah, 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 yeah. pardon okay. my my uh, my no, lack of uh, knowing uh, Canadian territories. <laughs> it's all good. It's just I mean, Mississauga is just just sort of a sub. It's just a suburb. There's nothing okay. uh, terribly interesting about it. Um, anyway, I mean, maybe there is. I don't know. But anyways, the, you haven't uh, found it yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so like, you know, you'd, you'd come in from Mississauga to to the city and you'd and uh the, you know there was like um suspect video and like and like uh silver snail and, and the beguiling which are comic comic book stores mm -hmm. and, and they were kind of all on the same street the, well the beguiling wasn't but anyway oh, well it was anyways the um you, so you go into suspect video and uh and they and they'd have all the all the cool shit you know like they they had they had like uh you know, I, I found out about like Battle Royale from from Suspect. Mm -hmm. I, found about, I mean, fuck, I found out about the Ring from Suspect. Like, yeah, the original, not that, not that, you know, yeah, the, their Americanized version. I, I Ringu as opposed to the Ring. Yeah, Ringu. <laughs> uh, I, I just always call it the Ring. Uh, but and then there's uh, but you know what I, I I used to watch a lot. It was um because the, the thing too is that we have this like on Channel Four in uh, in Toronto we have like the CM, CMFT. Mm -hmm. uh, a TV, which is sort of like, a, um, they, they play like foreign stuff. Like they play, they play a lot of Bollywood stuff and they'd also mm -hmm. play a lot of Hong Kong stuff. And uh, I remember seeing like the bride with white hair. I, I remember maybe that's like the first, like sort of, you know, Asian movie mm -hmm. that, I, that I thought was like really cool was, was bride with white hair, which was Ronnie Yu who went on to do bride of Chucky and uh, yep. uh, Jason versus Freddy or Freddy versus Jason, whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, I just thought that movie was just awesome, and because I, I liked because you you see those kinds of uh, you know uh, Hong Kong like wirework kind of movies, uh, those like Choi Hawk movies and shit. Yeah, they're, they're they're awesome, but like this one was like that, but also but sort of like fantasy, like with horror elements in it and stuff. And they're yeah, and the bad guys were like these Siamese twins, and it was just like damn, this is fucking sick, you know? Like, but at the same time, like that movie's not even that. It's not even that old it's like i, I want to say it's maybe 93 but um but in any case we, whatever you can fact check that later but the, the thing yeah. is, is that um um uh that 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 kind of shit was kind of what uh was maybe like my, my introduction uh to to like you know asians because you'd also just you know you're a kid the last thing you want to watch is like some some like subtitle uh movie right uh, of course, but, you know, people that are 30, 40 years old, they have a hard time even just keeping their eye on the screen outside of like, okay, I got to have my phone here for a minute because, uh, and then you lose track of everything. So, sure, absolutely. But I guess what I'm saying is like, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd flip by, like I'd flip by on, and, and on Channel 4 and I, and I'd catch like, uh, you know, maybe a snippet of like, uh, um, Mr. Vampire or like, Close Encounters of the Spooky Kind or something like mm -hmm. like uh like one of, the, one of those bouncing vampire movies and shit and I was yeah. just, I'd be like damn that's that's weird like but but I, it wasn't until Bride with White Hair where I was like like I, I just got hooked and I just watched the whole thing yeah uh, and so like you know uh I, but I, I mean I I must have been maybe like 13 14 at that time yeah um, you know prior to that I was just your your typical uh video store kid you know like all the freddy and the jason shit and the Chucky and all that but uh yeah the the, the the asian stuff uh i mean I, I wouldn't even say like like eight like sort of asian uh horror or or exploitation cinema um it i i didn't really it, it, i wouldn't consider it even really much of like an influence to be honest like yeah um, I, it's just it's just more like i just respect it and i especially respect kind of like the the category three area category three era mm -hmm. uh, because um of just like the like the there's nothing more transgressive than than that era like mm -hmm. just the the complete like the complete uh like flagrant disregard for good taste is just it's just so amazing for for someone like me who's like just uh is you're, you're looking for like freedom and truth kind of yeah. in cinema, you know and like, and just to see people just being like, what the fuck ever, let's just make something. We don't have a whole lot of years left. Yeah. Uh, having, having like a, an independent uh, nation state. Um, so fuck it, let's just do it. And, and uh, it really comes across and like, see, like I, I'd only actually seen like, I mean, I see the big ones. I see like, you know, Taxi Hunter and, and uh, um, 
uh, what do you call it? Like the Ebola syndrome and the untold story and like Dr. Lamb and all that stuff. And then like, but it was only like recently that like I, I got I got into some of the more hardcore stuff like like Red to Kill mm-hmm. and uh, like just these ones that are like whoa this is a little bit this is a little bit like um, <laughs> I even mean for I'm, even for your sensibilities you're still like wow I mean they were really going going yeah, for like, it. <laughs> I mean I, it, I like I I love it but it's like I this is not stuff that I would really recommend to people yeah because it's just it's just a little bit too fucked up and and maybe a little bit. Uh, you know, like uh, maybe it's a little bit like um, just too mean spirited. Like, like you know what I mean, yeah, it's kind of nihilistic, I guess, in a certain way, where it's just like yeah. they're making a film that's just I don't I don't I don't know I don't want to say just shock the shock, but I guess you have the way you have to look at it from like that era of film is that to your point that how much time do we have left to make our own films? How much time do we have left to say what we want to say and it's also and and i mean this is kind of veering into another direction like a film like you know a serbian film where you know you talk to the director you hear about his like i made this film because this is how i feel the country is treating me and our people and things like that where you make a film that's this transgressive in in that category three era it's like i feel like we're being just murdered by our own government or we just we're 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 not allowed to do anything anymore. So of course you're going to, it's like a, a kid who's being bad. It's like, I'm going to act out. I don't care. I'm going to get punished, but fuck this. Or I'm, we're going to go for it either way in a lot of ways. Well, it's, it, it's definitely fun, fun to do bad things, you know? Of course. Um, I mean, that's why we keep doing them, I guess. Right? <laughs> F- fuck the consequences. We're going to, we're going to keep doing it anyway. Yeah. But um, I don't know. Like, I mean, to be honest, like, like, I, I guess I understand, uh, I can kind of understand the the Hong Kong uh, perspective mm-hmm. uh, more so than the than the Serbian perspective. Yeah, uh, like not not to say that I that I have a really good insight into into. Neither do I really. I mean, it's just kind Hong of. Kong, yeah. mm-hmm. But I'm just saying that, like, um, I don't know, like, it 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 really does seem like it's, it it's total. It's the different thing. Like a like it's coming from a different place. Like uh, I you know I. I had a great time watching a Serbian film, actually, and I, I liked. Uh, I, I didn't. I didn't think it was terribly. <clears throat> um, like I, I didn't really think it was. Like. I felt like it was tasteful enough. I, I felt like they. It wasn't they, done in a way like you know there was horrible shit happening, but yeah. it wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, grossly overused, like you know you. I mean, thing with I don't know just newborn porn if you just want to go for for scenes like that it's like yes it's reprehensible it's disgusting but like they, they, didn't, they didn't they didn't show penetration like they, no. they like it's just like which is almost worse in a way where you're thinking about it, it's like oh my god like no, you're almost up if yeah but sometimes I, if you're like you see it it's like oh okay i seen i saw it but on the other hand if your imagination is left to your wheels start turning. It's like, ooh, then mm-hmm. you can go in a lot of different directions. At least your mind is a fucked up place. Yeah. I mean, so. I, I, I sort of, I, I disagree with you, actually. I, I think okay. that when you, when you show it, um, that's, because uh, I'm, not, I'm not talking about like sort of, you know, being a, what do you call it? Like, I'm not talking about sort of being like the moral police or, or the yeah. decency police. I'm talking about like how good <clears throat> the film yeah. And, and if you if you show like, you know, if you make like a, a rubber baby vagina and you and you have a guy putting his fucking dick in it and it's yeah. you're that, it, like the audience is just going to be like, like, what the fuck is like, like what's wrong with you? What's making yeah. you want to show that on screen, I guess. Yeah, like, like, or, or, and it's kind of like, oh, OK, so you're you're Mr. Extreme then. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so shocked. You're such a shocking guy. You know, like, <laughs> like it's just it's it, it, it makes the audience turn on the film mm-hmm. and. And if you if you are artful with with sort of I mean putting putting a uh, a fucked up idea into someone's head is as easy as just explaining something to, to them right and yeah. you can go a step further by like sort of using you know like the the, the tools of cinema to to kind of show a, a few things but not show all of them yeah um, and and that can be very effective and sometimes you just want to show all of it too right mm-hmm. like like I I always. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure uh, where I saw this, but I think it was like a, 
a commentary track or maybe like a, a, a special featurette for like Hellraiser. Mm -hmm. Talking about like the part where um, Frank comes out of the floor. Yeah. Uh, he comes back from uh, the, the whatever, the torture dimension or whatever. Yeah, and like up like, from the Cenobites world yeah. and everything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and Clive Barker is just saying like, this is, this is a, a really, um, it's, it's sort of a, a reaction to sort of the idea of like, oh, you know, it's scarier if you don't show it, you know, it's like, no, sometimes like if for just sort of this sort of uh, vulgar, like uh, ghastly kind of, uh, you know, disgusting spectacle, sometimes it just needs to be center stage with just a spotlight on it mm -hmm. and you need to show all of it, right? But then it, for other things, it's like, uh, like for example, like some of the, the tab like you know extreme taboo stuff like we see in a serbian film and also mm -hmm. in the sadness as well yeah um, there, there, i mean i want to talk about some of those things because there are some things that you you don't show but you show like an after effect of it like there's one scene like kind of one segment in particular i kind of want to like get your get your gauge on. There was, i guess there's two there's two there's one that that you kind of see the whole thing and then it kind of shocks you because there's a a punchline to it a little bit, uh, the basketball yeah. court scene and everything. And then there's another scene later on. So in a way, um, <laughs> so like, yeah, but I, I know what you're talking about and it's just kind of like, um, let's talk about the second one actually. Uh, okay. the, well, like what, what I do is I don't show the after, well, I do show the aftermath, but what I, what I do show, what I show instead of showing the act itself mm -hmm. is I show some, a guy who's hiding and kind of like, he's, just trying to um like just through sheer willpower trying to just make it not exist you know yeah. like, like and i just thought like that's a great that's a great thing to show the audience because that's that's who i want who the audience is right now the, yeah. like, i don't want to see this please don't show me this right but it, but it, it does it's not ending it, it hangs yeah. mm -hmm. it hangs just a like just a little longer than you than it's comfortable uh being on screen and i and i just I mean, all this shit, man, it's like, there's not really, you know, you can go on YouTube and you can, and you can uh, watch these like jack offs talk about like, you know, why films work and like how, why this scene worked and why it didn't and this and that and the other thing. But it's like, yeah, where's your fucking movie? You know, like, like you're not you, like, if you're so good at movies, then where, where's yours? No, you don't yeah. have one because all you know how to do is just be a Monday morning quarterback and talk about like some, some, some genius who's way yeah. better than you. And uh, and just and just uh, you know pick pick his work apart and act like by virtue of of picking that apart somehow you did it or whatever you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, but I would have done this way and this way. It's like, well, you didn't. You haven't. Yeah. You've never made a film. It's like yeah. like to your point. It's like get off your ass and make something instead of. I mean, God, being God this bless guy. those guys. You know, like at least they're getting paid. You know, they, they, yeah. they're, they, it's Well, not, some of them are, I'm sure. <laughs> but but I guess um you know. Uh, what I'm, what I'm, my point with all that sort of thing is, is that like um, this sort of stuff. There's no. My point is that there's no uh, rule book or textbook. Like you just have to kind of touchy feely, figure it out, and kind of uh, just follow your follow your instincts and really follow your heart, follow your emotions, and and, and try to. Because really, what what in my in my I mean, who the fuck am I? I'm just a guy who made this one movie. But like in my opinion, I think that it's sort of this what you're doing with a film is you're just kind of you're just sort of uh playing a game with emotions and you're kind of trying to chain together emotions in sequence and, and trying to get people to to sort of feel something that that you have in you like you're, you're trying to get all these feelings that you have inside of yourself and trying to communicate them to, to people on the other side of the of the screen right yeah. And, and, and to do that, there's no, there's no real, uh, there's no real rule book. You just have to kind of um, use your intuition to kind of make it work. So I just kind of felt like you, you just feel like something like in this case, it's better if I do it this way, because this will get across the point better. And in this case, it's better if I show the whole thing, because that's what this scene is about. It's about yeah. the vulgarity. Uh, and then this scene is maybe it's better to kind of just show it in like quick, like just show a quick flash of something. And yeah. then just so that they get the idea of like, of the, the intensity of, of what's going on. But, but uh, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it, there's, there's all kinds of different ways to do it. And, and it, what it all comes from is just like watching shit tons of films and just kind of, you know, 
treating it as like sort of a, a buffet table, I guess, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's the, 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 the film itself is just, I mean, I, I was hooked in for, I mean, you, you have a lot of good, great set pieces and I mean, how, how was it, what was it like? And I'm just going to kind of shift gears and kind of like the making of the film a little bit and like the, the actors and everything like that. If it, the, the world feels lived in, it feels like things have been going, going fine, going fine. Um, what was it like kind of like casting the people you had in the film? And was there, were you looking for specific people? Or it's like, hey, I know you can work. What were the auditions like? I mean, you can give me the quick overall synopsis of it. Like, was it quick to cast people? Or were you like very specific of who you wanted to have in this film? Um, uh, well, uh, uh, the uh, Barrett, Barrett Zhu, who is the, plays the male lead, Jim. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he, uh, he was kind of like uh, Jeffrey Huang, the, uh, the big boss kind of insisted that we use him. Okay. He just liked him. He saw him in some like movie and he was just like that. I want that kid. I, like I guess he's kid. got like the boy next door type look. Like he just looks like somebody we can all relate to type thing. He wasn't, he's not, you know, overly muscular or anything like that. He just looks like a regular guy that we're like, oh, that could be me. Yeah, but he's also kind of like, um, he's also kind of, I, I like to, to think that he's kind of like, a, kind of, you know, masculine, like kind of a little more masculine looking than like, mm -hmm. you know, your, just your, your average Joe that you'll, that you'll find in the street of Taipei. Like he's kind of, yeah. he's kind of, I mean, he's a model the fucking guy. Right. So, he's a good uh, dude, so. <laughs> uh, so, so we got, we got this guy and, uh, and then that kind of, I originally had the female lead uh, written to be a little bit more like of an older, like an older, like maybe someone who's in their late twenties, you know? Yeah. Just a little more, um, a little more weathered and, uh, and maybe stronger, you know, mm -hmm. more experienced. But because uh, Barrett was so young, he was like 21, I needed to have someone who was younger because I didn't want there to be sort of this, like this extra dynamic of like, oh, you know, it's a it's a couple and the girl is like uh, eight eight years older than, than the guy. I mean, it's it's far from unheard of, but at the same yeah. time, it's like, why is that? Why is that that, you know? So yeah. I was like, okay, they need to be close to the same age. So I just started, we started casting all these girls and then uh, Regina came in and she was one of the, like the last ones to, to come in. We, we, we had this maybe like, I don't know, I want to say like maybe like 15 girls for that part. Yeah. And, um, and uh, she came in and uh, I didn't even, at, at this point I was so sick and tired of doing uh, uh, like rehearsals or whatever, like getting her to do a scene that I, I all I did was I just sat, sat and had an interview yeah. and just talked about why she wanted to do the film. And I just, I just really loved how she wanted, like, she just talked about how, like, uh, you know, how she thought about the character and, and, how, and what her sort of philosophy was with, with, like, acting and, like, what what she wanted to do in her future and, and stuff. And I was just like, this, this is a real smart, smart young girl. Like, uh, I, I, I liked her vibe. And then, and then I got her just to kind of, like, uh, uh, just sort of, I, I got her to do one scene, the scene at the very end. Yeah, where she, she, she's got to cry. Yeah, for the, uh, for the uh, at the finale, right? Yeah, which I uh, think is like you, you bring that that finale is like full circle, which I think is, com you know, considering what the whole film is about, it's like people just don't have agency of their own body, and it's like the sadness is like them just their eyes can't close, they're just naturally crying and everything, but then yeah. she's crying because she hasn't been, I guess, infected yet, I mean, for lack right. of a better term. Yeah, and that was great in compared in, in what what he was saying to her was like the most like horrible, vile things, but she's crying because she doesn't quite understand. Like, I thought that was, I was like, damn, this is some good ass acting right here. It, it was very impressive. Uh, but when I saw her do that scene and I just saw like her, like so like, like despair and, and, and fear and hopelessness and all this, mm -hmm. uh, like it was, I, it, I was just kind of moved by, by her. It's just, it's all about the face. It's all about yeah. just, her, her, the way that that girl looks and her face and the way that she uh, looks afraid. I mean, I, I, you know, as soon as, soon as it's like, okay, cut, like I'm, I'm up and I'm like getting her like a glass of yeah. water. Are you okay? <laughs> you want to just rescue her, you know? And I was just like, if I feel this way at this rehearsal, I got to have her in the film. Like, like everybody in the audience is just going to want to reach through the screen and, and just rescue her because they feel so scared for her. And at the end of the day, like that's, that's what works in a horror movie, you know, being, being afraid for the characters. 
Yeah, I mean, from this, from the time you see her getting out of bed with him, and then her, I mean, everything kind of jumps off with her on the subway with, I guess you could call it the main antagonist, who I didn't see that guy as like being the villain of the film. I mean, I guess ultimately it's like more, you know, government or science or something like that being kind of like the ultimate villain, but him being like the uh, relentless killer, I guess, in a lot of ways. Like, I like to think of him as the uh, as the villain of the film. Yeah, I mean, it, and because he starts in a way where it's like, I, I mean, I guess as 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 males, we we're not put in a, in a similar position as as women are on on subways or just public transport where you're sitting next to a creepy guy and the guy just won't quit, and then I guess it's like a a metaphor for what he does in the rest of the entire film where it's like, well, then you get to see who he really is once he gets infected and everything like that. Like, oh, he is a piece of shit. So, and yeah. he's like the worst piece of shit too. He's just, he's just, I mean, he's just someone who just never fit in, I guess, you know? Uh, he, yeah. he, 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 like, I mean, I always, I always told, when I was talking with uh, uh, Wong Tzu Chang, who plays, who plays the businessman or, or mm-hmm. Johnny, Johnny Wong is his, uh, is his name okay his english name we'll just yep. call him Johnny Wong. Yep. uh he uh he uh i mean this this guy is a is a fucking righteous dude like i mm-hmm. i cannot uh i cannot express how how much he added to the production uh not not just but from an acting perspective but also like i mean you, you know you got to think like he's he's there around uh like chen ying ru who played molly mm-hmm. and Regina. Uh, and they're, they're they're girls who are like twenty, and <clears throat> they don't they haven't been in a lot of stuff. Actually, both of them they'd never been in a feature film before. Okay. Uh, and Johnny Johnny had to do quite a lot of scenes with the both of them, mm-hmm. and, uh, and he was just a real mentor for them, and and just really taught them a lot about acting and and sort of how to you know summon real emotions and, and that kind of thing. And um, he was just awesome, really great. And when, and when he he actually came in to audition for the president uh and and then uh when i when i saw him uh i was just like i think i need you to read for the businessman and he was just like oh well, but i prepared all this shit for the president i was like yeah yeah cool whatever let's let's do the, let's do the businessman and he just and i told i kind of just started explaining it to him and i was just like like um you know uh uh this is a this is a guy who maybe has had the same middle management job for like you know 30 years and maybe like his boss is like 20 years younger than him and like uh he doesn't he's unmarried he's never he doesn't know how to he just has never known how to connect with yeah people. and 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 that's who he is and then this virus uh for him is actually like almost this like this you know the, this beautiful blessing where he finally uh finds himself and uh and it's and he, it but it's sort of like you know he finds himself in becoming a a murderous uh a sex pervert yeah and um and, and for him it's the it's just the the best day in the world like the the, the the best day of his entire life and i think that that kind of like like revenge of the nerds aspect of the sadness is, is really what the heart and soul of it is yeah it, for me i mean regardless of, of of whether or not that's like front and center mm-hmm. uh that's that's kind of what's front and center for me in the sadness it's sort of like uh, when, when this when this happens to the world um well-adjusted people uh well-adjusted people's lives are destroyed mm-hmm. and, and uh sort of malcontents are finally find meaning and and uh, so that's sort of like a, a revenge of the nerds sort of situation yeah to the to like the nth extreme type thing it's just yeah. you know they're there's a lot of things that watching this film and I'll, I, I might end up watching it again, to be honest, it's like there's visuals that are kind of seared in your mind. And you, I mean, kudos to you, man, for making a film that's like it's, it stays with you. It, it stays with you like you just kind of feel a little kind of like dirty and everything watching it. But at the same time, I think that's part of a film that leaves a lasting impression and be yeah, damned I- what people say is like, oh, well, this is just violence for the sake of being violence like i don't think so i think it, ultimately everybody who says that is probably the person who would be bashing the guy in the balls with the spike baseball bats <laughs> if he was infected or something like that too so 
fuck what you're saying about like, oh well why, you can't be violent it's like oh well you know what what's your what's your inner voice telling you in a lot of ways like the, the most repressed people end up being sometimes the most you know nihilistic and violent and crazy sure. all those ways. all those all those mafia guys uh li listen to uh frank sinatra and then yeah you know, how, like how many how many uh i mean you know how many like 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 grind cord people are like are like you know murderers or 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 hitmen or whatever i don't yeah. know what are the statistics I, I just wanted to say that I, I really i like to think that the sadness is like it it, it creates <laughs> uh I, this is a funny way to put it but i think it creates a safe space for okay. for, for us to uh for us to kind of revel revel in uh in uh sort of our our uh ugly ghastly thoughts yeah like it kind of allows us to kind of take a little bit of take a little bit of pleasure and to kind of have a little have a warm smile over uh over you know the the ghastly and the and the cool and the and the, uh, the you know the fucked up i think mm -hmm. that it allows us it allows us to to you know to enjoy it a little bit and, and maybe feel kind of re related to, in some way to maybe what like it's like to be uh, infected or something i don't know yeah. like maybe i'm being a little bit uh I'm being a little bit, uh, 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 you know, too artsy fartsy or whatever. <laughs> you can never be too artsy fartsy on the show. Uh, <laughs> and I also feel like in a lot of ways, it's, it, like to, to your point, like a safe space where it's like, if the worst we have to worry about with a virus that uh, sweeps across the world, it's like, oh, we might get a cold or get the sniffles or get a runny nose or get a sore throat. It's like, you're bringing it to like, this is the absolute apocalyptic nightmarish doomsday thing that we can have where it is a safe space where it's like i hope this is not going to happen but yeah. you know i mean because even like at near the end when the the scientist is talking about the uh the the, the guy who works in the uh, in the hospital he's kind of explaining what the virus does to like your brain and everything like that it's like when you listen to it it's like i could i mean why couldn't that happen at the same time too you know let me, let me, did, you ever, did you ever watch that uh, that that old series from like the the 2010s? Uh, no, no, two, like the uh, probably around 2008 or so or 2007 mm -hmm. called Masters of Horror. It, it was like oh yeah, all, yeah. So, Mick, so Gar not, Mick Garris was doing episodes and John yeah. Carpenter and Dario Argento and everything. Yeah, and Mick Garris was actually the uh, the showrunner. Yeah, uh, and uh, I think he directed one or two. But but uh, uh, the the one I'm thinking of is. Uh, uh, who directed it? I can't. I think it might have. It might have even been. Actually, I'm not. I'm not going to to speculate on who directed it. But it was. Yeah. It was called the Screwfly Solution, uh, and it was with. Yeah, uh, I remember that one, but I remember. I forget who directed it, but it was some name. Yes. It was. It, it was uh, uh, Jason Priestley from 90210, and Elliot Gould from uh, uh, the, the Long Goodbye. Yeah. And um, and and Elliot Gould second stringing for Jason Priestley was pretty hilarious but we've seen anyway. Elliot Gould in anything I always brings it I mean I I was a big fan and I uh, tangent for like the devil and Max Devlin was like one of these like early Disney movies I really liked Elliot Gould in for whatever right. reason too but that's just me first sure. <laughs> I mean it's, it's, it's a it's a good one you know yeah. uh, I was gonna say that um uh, uh that 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 uh show that that I, I'd never heard of the story before. I actually afterwards I, I went and I looked at the story. It turns out that the, uh, the the adoption, in terms of just like you know, a, like a scene to scene mm -hmm. uh, adoption, it's actually very close to, to the to the original book by by Rakuna Sheldon. Uh, that pen name is uh, Rakuna. I think it's, it was actually written. Her name's Alice Sheldon, but okay. Rakuna is a way cooler name, so we'll just yeah. go with that. Yeah, Rakuna and, sounds uh, better. <laughs> awesome. Uh, but anyways, um. The idea there is like, uh, for for the listeners who don't know, it's like it's about this. Um, uh, all of a sudden, there's sort of like a uh, biological agent released into like the global population, and what it does is it is it makes a man uh, when when a man gets like horny, uh, instead of wanting to have sex, he just wants to he wants to kill the woman. So 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 the whole idea is kind of just like. Um, uh, but but what's 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 interesting about that is that it doesn't actually it doesn't turn you into like a mindless like rage twenty eight days later zombie yeah what it does is it is it 
it just this is just the way that your brain works now so so society actually changes so it's like they they the the men men develop this religion about like they 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 realize like oh you know what women are actually filthy and dirty and and are uh um deserve to be murdered violently so they create this sort of religion and mm -hmm. and all of a sudden like uh there's there starts to be almost like a like a, a you know a crazy sort of uh, fundamentalist change in the way the world works and and all this all this shit and it's all it all has to do with just like this tiny switch in the brain like that mm -hmm. that thing there like everything is downstream from the from the limbic system from the yeah. uh, the, uh, the the more primal brain right the that, reptilian that, brain if anything yeah sure 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 and that and that actually that that was a that was a big influence for that particular speech like I think I probably um, I think I probably was really thinking about the the screw the screw fly solution when I was writing that that long uh, piece of dialogue for for the doctor. Yeah, well, I mean, he delivers it, and it's, it, I, I like that there's like a, a certain scientific kind of like explanation for everything. It, it 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 lends itself to like something in reality where it's like something like this could happen. I mean, we're 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 thinking worst case scenario, but it's not completely off the rails. And there's always like the you know the the mammalian brain, the reptilian brain, and everything like that, and the most primal side to like what makes you a upstanding citizen. And mm -hmm. even like you know, there's also the fine line between pleasure and pain, and everything like that too. So everybody talks about things like that. So it's it, it's it's fucked up, but the way you portray it, it, it's fucked up, and it's also like glorious and it's gore and just like the unrelenting terror that you know our characters are kind of going through so wow. um it's uh i, I want to ask you two more things um what was your favorite scene to shoot hopefully you you and i think on the same page I, i'm i'm trying to think of what what was the most fun for you to shoot and then what was what was kind of like early audience reactions to like screening this to people like in taiwan and everything like that too oh okay well um the most like fun um scene to shoot was um i don't know actually like you, you're probably going to want to you're probably expecting me to say like the subway scene the subway uh, scene just looked like is it's tight quarters it's claustrophobic and yeah. there's so much going on and the way you're editing it also is just like it looks great because it's, it's bouncing back and forth and having so many people do so many crazy things at the same time, <laughs> just, uh, yeah, yeah. It, 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 like me, you might, you might enjoy one of the more quiet moments in the film, you know, shooting perhaps. Well, so. okay. You know, yeah. Yeah. Just what's easy. But to be honest, like I, what, what I liked was, um, so the, the ending scene, like, I don't want to give too much away, but like the, the, the finale of the film, um, where, uh, Re Regina really gets to, uh, act, mm -hmm. um, uh, that was actually written like when I first pitched the script. The the, the ending was was a little bit different, actually, mm -hmm. kind of a lot different. And um, and uh, um, and, and it was the, and it was that ending, the ending that that wasn't shot. That actually was was what uh, you know sealed the deal. Like, mm -hmm. oh, we're, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do this. You know, we're gonna, like this guy's gonna open up his wallet. And he's gonna independently finance like the entire movie pretty much by himself you know yeah like i mean give or take like we, we there's a little bit of money coming in from different spots but like yeah the large majority was from jeff jeff huang god bless him yeah. and um uh uh what i was going to say is that um i ended up just changing the ending like i was just like once once we were we got the foot in the door i was just like <laughs> this, this is I think it'd be better if it was this film. And I and yeah. so I changed it. And he was like, what the what, what happened to the fucking ending? And I was just like, look, this is look, trust me, this is gonna be this, this will be way better. So, so he finally was like, uh, uh okay, you know, the, the guy, the guy trusts me, you know, and I I I really am thankful for for just the, the amount of trust that that has been uh, uh afforded afforded to me by by Jeff. Yeah. Um so like, but but anyways, all, uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh uh, that that scene when 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 Regina kind of has to sort of do what she does. I don't want to give it away, but like when she has to kind of do what she does, uh, I I'm sitting there in Video Village and I'm just like sitting there like watching the watching the screen and I'm just like and then she starts to do it and and she she nailed, we only did one take of that by the way and she just nails it and and I I started my eyes start welling up and I start like kind of like like you know 
not, I didn't, I wasn't fully crying, but I definitely, if I, you know, uh, didn't resist and I kind of blinked my eyes a lot, I definitely would have cried, but I was just, I was so proud of her. And so, so uh, like, that was just like a sure, a, a pure assurance that like, this is, this film's going to be good. Like, like mm-hmm. I know that this is going to be good now, you know, uh, because, because you did that, you, you uh, were able to, uh, to summon that and, and to, and to give me that performance. Like you, you gave me that and I can overlook like some of maybe the other, like some of the annoying stuff that kind of we had to put up with, with this. <laughs> but um, that, that was, that was definitely the most like memorable, memorable moment for me was just like her, uh, you know, a, a act, actress with no, had never done a, a feature film before just nailing it. And just, mm-hmm. I, I, it was pretty, uh, you know, pretty moving, I, I should, I should say. Uh, and then um, as far as the, the, the Taiwanese audience is concerned, um, I mean, uh, you know, there were some people who just who totally got it yeah. and were like, this is great and, and, and we love this and, uh, and, and this is awesome. And then there's some people who just uh, couldn't see past the, the, oh, this is just fucking gore and swearing and yeah. gosh, who cares? Why can't you make a, a cool movie where, where it's all where the plot's all intricate and it's and 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 it's like um you know like the there's like there's a misdirection and and like oh the killer was actually left-handed and then oh but we found the writing with the wedding wedding ring the red herring oh yeah yeah, yeah. okay (laughs) you know what i mean like that like it's it's all ridiculous it's like the early on in the movie like some guy will like take off his wedding ring and then like he'll he'll look at it and then like later on at the end of the movie it's like uh it's paid you know, off in some way yeah, or something the, like the, that. The, the, the wedding ring, like, uh, is what gets, you know, like, falls into the guy's mouth and chokes the killer or something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's like, just, oh. yeah, it was the thing. If you hadn't done it, and it's just like, and people are like, I think, I really do believe that, like, um, maybe I shouldn't attribute this to, like, to, a, to the general Taiwanese audience, but mm-hmm. um, I think that that kind of writing, that kind of, like, um, you know, like, like, roundabout sort of, uh, uh, like all, all, oh, it all coming together in the end, and like yeah. and this this sort of thing is like oh yes, bravo! This that, I think that that's what the, the the general audience in Taiwan really responds to, okay. and, I may, and maybe that's true everywhere. Like maybe those kinds of like uh, stories that that tend to stick to um, structural narrative things where it's like you have this and this and this and you and introduce just, that in act one and act three it comes back around right. type thing, just, yeah. just sort of uh just sort of a tried and true narrative structure right like just yeah. sort of something where it's kind of because it's it's almost like they 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 felt like with the sadness because um it didn't end the way that they wanted to they felt almost like it was a mistake on my part like like hey you forgot to give us a happy ending and i was just like no, it's, it's it's this is the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. Well, he had a smile on his face at the end. I guess that's a happy ending. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Hey, sport, right? But um, but I, I was gonna say that um, uh, I mean, th- there was also other things too. I mean, a lot of some people uh, uh, you know, d- didn't like the fact that I'm like a a a, a white director directing like a, a Taiwanese film. Uh, that that's something that I that you know, I mean. I'm not going to be the guy who's who's starts uh, complaining about racial discrimination or anything like that. Like that's not mm-hmm. something I'm terribly interested in. Like a conversation I'm not terribly interested in having. But like yeah, that, that discourse can be quite exhausting, you know, yeah, in a lot of ways. I'm sure. And it's just kind of like, look, you know, maybe I'm not the best guy for the job, but like no one else wanted it, so I did it. And um, and uh, so there was there's there are those kinds of concerns. I'd say that mostly, like um, you know, it's just it was fairly fairly polarized uh I, I definitely i definitely had people from taiwan get in touch with me and say like you you did you've done you've done something for for the, the national cinema that that no one else has done before and and i and i really hope this opens a door for sort of future filmmakers i, I really hope that like you know in 10 years from now like some kid uh who's like 10 make something like a, like just something insane because he saw yeah uh, kube or the sadness uh, mm-hmm. uh w- w- when he was a little a little kid or or whatever you know shit like that like that kind of thing uh but then there's other people who just think like like that you know 
uh, this this movie is just it sucks. Like it's it you know it's trash, but moreover it sucks. Some people have told me like you know like on on Letterbox, it's just like I've never seen a more boring movie, and I'm just like I don't know what the fuck. I don't know what, what fucking movie you're watching. It's like uh, boring is like yeah, boring is relative, and I don't I don't I mean every that's a, the the gift and the curse of the internet everybody has a fucking opinion now so no matter what it is somebody's gonna let you know what it is and usually it's like oh this sucks like well man, it's a, you're, you're really bringing the heat on this uh on this uh dissection of the film every, everybody just wants to uh everyone just wants to score points you know of course yeah, but that's that's all what that's that's all anyone's trying to do and it's like um you're uh if if you if you say that you you like something or you say you dislike something, it's less about the thing and it's more about how that makes you look. You know, yeah. like I I liked, you know, you know what I really liked? I really liked, uh, you know, whatever this movie. You know, like and th- and then and then that like how, you know how does that align? How does that align me like uh, politically or whatever? You know, like oh I really liked I really like this movie. You know, it's like oh yeah, well, you know, great, good for you. Yeah, it, it's it's so uh, it's it's so completely insane just sort of what like the role that media plays in uh in in life today i i just wanted to i just with the sadness i just wanted to make something that i felt was just very sincere and and just very like like look like this is i don't i'm not a not a genius i'm not a i'm not a smart guy i'm just i'm just a guy who really cares about about uh about horror films Mm-hmm. And, I, and I really care about like like uh, uh, I really care about like sort of a, a, a frustrated, bored audience that that just hasn't had a, a just a really good movie that takes them that takes them seriously and that takes itself seriously in a long mm-hmm. time. I just wanted to re- and I just wanted like I said before it was like it's all about just sort of chaining together feelings and just trying to maintain this feeling. It's like sailing a ship and trying to. You're constantly you're constantly uh uh pulling lines and adjusting yeah. the sail and adjusting the keeping the course where, exactly. where you need to go yeah. and that that's that's really i just looked at it from a very pragmatic perspective uh and just tried to make sure that the movie was paced well and and that it's uh it left people feeling feeling satisfied you know feeling like 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 i'm really happy that i'm really happy that 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 kind of movie can still be made you know mm-hmm. so end up being like an hour and a half thank you for making a movie that's an hour and a half uh it doesn't uh have to stress on everything else in between it's it it goes right into the film and once kind of like the opening kind of set piece starts it doesn't really relent the entire time there's not many quiet scenes it goes full bore from I guess you could say the the restaurant scene all the way right. until the, till, till the end scene, yeah. and it, it never left me in a moment where I'm like, oh, for the people on Letterbox, like, well, this sucks, this is boring. It's like, I know you must have been watching the sadness from like 1987 or something like that, some other American version of, of a movie called the sadness or something like that. You know so. what, man? Like uh, <laughs> the, uh, you know that that's that's just I think that's just like what I was saying before, like just just with um, people. People kind of like if they're if they're shocked by something, uh, uh, sometimes the reaction you, you don't want to like if 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 you know if I shock you, you don't want to give me the uh, how do you say that again? It's like uh, uh, you don't want to um, don't give him the satisfaction. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. You, don't, you don't want to give me the satisfaction of saying that you're shocked, right? Yeah, it's like oh man, good one. It's like no, keep. Keep going with it. I'm like I want to, I want to go on this journey with you right now. So. Right, but it's like, like with with the uh, with someone who's like um, who's shocked by something, uh, they don't want to let me know that that I shocked them. So instead, they'll just turn around and be like, "Man, it was just the same fucking thing again." And again. Like they'll just they'll just sort of yeah. like just be like that. And and that's just the way, like it, it it you know it it all comes down to just sort of like <clears throat> like you know. We we've learned a lot about how to troll people really well. Oh, uh, we over, have. It's it's a new art. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> over the last like full, you know, the last uh, whatever, a couple decades or, or more, and uh, it's just like to, to actually just like go full on and like you know start screaming at someone is a good way to play yourself. So this yeah. kind of like like nonchalant, passive aggressive, like like yeah, I mean, 
some people might like that me i was bored you know that kind of thing is like the 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 the, the, the way that you troll yeah exactly it's like they want to get their they still want to get their opinion across like oh other people might like this but i didn't like it because of yeah. whatever the whatever the reason is whatever it's, reason they've concocted in their minds like ah oh, well fuck this for the, for the listeners out there i mean if some of you didn't like the film it's fine I, I i i guess i can understand it's not a perfect film uh but but i mean at the end of the day like i really was thinking about all of you guys out there all right i was really hoping that the horror fans out there uh would really just sort of uh, you know, they, they, they've seen a lot, they've seen all kinds of stuff, they've been bored, they've been, they've, they've gone into stuff expecting something and been disappointed, and I just wanted to give something that, in my mind, wouldn't, wouldn't have disappointed me. So that, that's what's up. No, I mean, I, I think in Fantasia, I think is kind of like the perfect kind of avenue for a film like this. Like, I, I you know, with everything going on, I, I would love to see this like in a, I hate crowded theaters, I probably won't go back to a crowded theater again. I, I enjoy a theater on Saturday morning at about 10 a.m. when I'm the only person in the screen or in the theater, I'm like, oh, this is great. I can enjoy this. Um, but I think this is one of these films that, you know, you, you and it just reminds me of like all the stories that uh, for Toronto Film, Toronto International Film Festival with like audition being screened there, world premiered there, and people have the barf bag or EQ the Killer or something like that, where people have barf bags like this is the most sick movie you've ever had. So I feel like this movie kind of harkens back to an old age of like eliciting a, a very specific response, hopefully. Well, and, and let me tell you this. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I was no. going to say that down. Uh, the, the last, I, I've seen a movie like that relatively recently. Like, I mean, the, the Fede Alvarez uh, Evil Dead oh, uh, yeah. uh, remake. Mm -hmm. that, that movie was a blast to watch in the movie theater yep um for the first i think that that movie kind of like loses its its engine like in the third act but like the first the first two acts are just fucking awesome and like yeah. and it's and and uh the, like all that eyeball stuff and the tearing off the face and oh yeah the cutting off the arm and just people in the theater just losing their fucking it's like cutting their mouth cutting cutting oh. their mouth open everything's like oh shit <laughs> yes, and people like you know I, I saw that in taiwan and pe people you know i saw like a probably like a, a, th a theater two thirds full and like people screaming and like th that's the best like that's that's the cinema experience like the only thing better than that well actually maybe is that maybe that's that is my favorite but like uh, another one that's comparable is like um like a, just a really good comedy like a like the, the first Borat movie or something like the yeah. first time I saw that in the theater and it's just like you're just you're just the theater is just losing their fucking minds yeah, like, like I can't I, believe I'm seeing this shit uh, and you're just and you're just screaming because it's so funny you know it, that's the best like that that's really what the the cinema is all about uh so and and i think that sort of a, a gore movie is uh is just is just i mean that's just heaven for me you know like just to watch it in a in a, in a packed theater and everybody like enthusiastic i'm super looking forward to to fantasia on saturday to uh to really just sort of uh just just to show this to, to people i i got people like friend you know i've just made friends recently people just messaging me like hey man i got my ticket you know i'm super yeah. and, then, and they just keep hey man what's going on what are you doing right now i'm just dr drinking a beer on the couch you know hey man what, what are you doing after the after the fantasia thing we should go out and fucking get smoke weed and fucking you know uh, the strip club you know maybe we can get some coke or whatever and i'm just like yeah sure sounds awesome let's do that uh, but it's um it's just super funny because uh all all these people are these fan all these fans are coming out of the woodwork and just kind of like showing their enthusiasm and it's just uh it's it's just a really good really good feeling just to to see people kind of appreciating it before they see it and i know that they're not going to be disappointed too like i know they won't <laughs> no I, I i don't think they, they 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 can't i mean and seeing this like in the program when i mean i'm of course i'm watching all these films virtually i'm not in in uh in canada for any any of the screenings unfortunately this is my second time doing fantasia twice in a row doing the virtual thing hopefully yeah. 2022 things will be better and maybe i'll be making my way up to the great white north or something for 26th edition of fantasia but um this was the one and i think this is also the film that is out of the box compared to every other thing on the program there's nothing else on the program like this and you kind of being able to premiere this uh uh at home you know near the end of the festival i think is also kind of like a really awesome cool homecoming for you as well so yeah i mean 
good luck, Rob. You know, you, <laughs> you've been you, you've been on a on a world on, on a on a whirlwind, I'm sure. But uh, congrats again on the film. It's I I can't stress enough. Like if you like gore splatter fests that are just completely insane and they go in a lot of directions that you don't see going. Uh, you you've truly made something that's special and disgusting, and I love it. I love you for it. I guess. <laughs> Thanks, man. I, cool. I, I just love uh, I love the fans out there who uh, who care about about um, you know like who st who still have enough faith in 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 filmmakers that that you know like you know it's kind of like you you know like you like you're you're a dog and and the owner keeps faking throwing the ball. <laughs> and uh, and finally like oh, finally he's gonna throw the ball and he's gonna give it a good one you know and like and finally i get to, I get to uh, enjoy that uh <laughs> that run after the ball this 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 analogy is breaking down slowly anyway, i know it, it started one place and it's like what is what is this guy talking about now what is happening <laughs> <laughs> the dog and the ball he finally caught the ball they finally didn't fake him anymore he caught the ball and uh, you ran all the way, man. You're 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 like the dog that caught the car finally. I guess. No, no, no. hold on. You're you're, you're you're misunderstanding. Like the the dog is the fan. So like the dog you know, is a fan. Okay. And then the 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 film uh, industry is the the owner with the ball, and the ball is like the the film. Okay. I keep faking it, faking it, and then like you so it's disappointing you, disappointing you, but then yeah. finally I give I let it rip, and that and when I let it rip, you go running, and then and you're enjoying yourself. So like the 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 ball that goes flying is like the sadness, is like the film that like kind okay. of delivers, you know. <laughs> the metaphor finally un is understood by me. Yeah, 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 yeah. But sorry, I, I, dude, it's been a long fucking day. So I, I, I was I was I was way too long winded. Anyways, I'm I'm, I'm a long winded kind of guy, you know. So am I. I mean, we, hey, we, we, you gave me a good amount of time, man. But thank you so much for talking about the film and congratulations again. Anything else you want to say before we close things out for you? Um, I don't think so. I think that, that we pretty much covered everything. I just, uh, yeah, just, try, uh, you know, catch this. I don't know when this is going to air, but just try to catch the sadness at a, a festival near you. We're, we're trying to keep it offline because mm -hmm. um, I just... Uh, um, there, there, there's a little, there's more interest than usual from like, uh, uh, like, you know, sort of mainland China because it is a Chinese language film. Like yeah. normally, like they, they wouldn't be too excited about like a, a, a film this small, but because it's a Chinese language language film, I, uh, I just want to keep it offline because it's so easy for like, you know, despite like all of the precautions that Fantasia goes to, yeah. to, uh, to put watermarks on videos, like. Like you know, it's really easy for just some some guy in mainland China just to use a VPN to to pirate the movie and then just to like you know give the middle finger like at anyone who tries yeah. to like, come at him for like you know whatever piracy or something like that. So it's so I'm I'm just being super extra careful and and you know what I think it's paying off too because the the um, uh, holding it from the the public kind of like mm -hmm. uh, like and kind of only select the select few being able to see it. Um, it's just making people fucking insane. They they want to see the movie so badly, and I just hope that they can just be patient and and wait for us to like uh, have like the wide release because because the reason why we're we're doing this is because we just want to be able to uh, we just want to be able to like uh, just make our friggin' money back off the film <laughs> so we can give you an like I can give you another one right not another maybe not another sadness movie but just like my next film you know my my sophomore film right yeah which, which, which i plan on just going bigger and better in, in every way right i mean this is a good way to start it and like fuck all you pirates don't fucking pirate this shit or anything like that watch the movie if you have the ways and means like like i said rob look for for i'm sure you're going to be doing the entire festival circuit uh coming up hope well knock on wood you know nothing weird is going to go on the rest of the year but we'll see what happens but Fantasia is the homecoming for you, and again, congrats. And uh, sadness is—it's it, the—it won't make you sad. It might make you throw up, maybe, but it won't make you sad. I can guarantee that. It's uh, congrats again, man. The, the movie's fucking awesome, and you deserve all the all the kudos in the world. So, hey man, thanks. Well, this is Matt. Simplistic Reviews podcast. Uh, of course, check out our coverage for Fantasia 2021. Uh, we'll have it in a link below. And uh, we'll catch you guys uh, next time for another interview. Coming soon.